Welcome back. I'm MTG Joe. I'm here with another uh, Throne of Eldraine deck tech. Uh, just a quick programming note before we get started. I will be here all Thursday, September 26th, streaming Throne of Eldraine on Twitch. Uh, pretty much the entire day, uh, as soon as it comes up, I think around 10 till about 6 or 7 uh, Eastern time. Uh, so you can find me that find me on Twitch that day. Otherwise, all the videos will be uploaded shortly thereafter onto YouTube. So probably Friday, Saturday, Sunday over that time once I do all the edits. Um, but we'll be playing a lot of the decks that we've done on these deck techs so far just to test them out to see if they're actually as good as I thought they'd be or if they're just steaming piles. Um, so a lot of people got introduced to my channel through my budget decks. Uh, we had the budget build series, stuff like that. Uh, those are things that I will be starting up again once we get the card pool, kind of know what the top decks are. I can start doing some build guides to start with like the no rare version and then mid tier and then uh, fully tuned versions. Um, so this is uh, an initial brew and I'll do more budget lists once I get all the cards, play around with the uncommons and stuff to see what really stands out. So in Throne of Eldraine there is a uh, kind of synergy deck where uh, if whenever you draw your second card each turn, uh, cards kind of trigger additional effects. So this is a budget is it card draw tribal. Uh, so you're basically looking to draw multiple cards per turn and then get some added benefit of doing so. So this is budget in the sense it is only 12 rares on arena, eight of which are the lands. Uh, the only other rare is Iron Craig Pyromancer, which I'll introduce, which is a key to the deck. Um, so there's opportunities, you can drop like the dual lands and just play basics, it's a little more inconsistent. In paper, this is under $100 and it's always something you can upgrade afterwards. Um, so the deck itself, you're playing a lot of cheap things that draw cards and then getting the payoffs. So walking through the deck, we have Opt, it's getting reprinted, so although this is the Dominaria printing, it just shows here, uh, Opt will be reprinted. It's a quick way to draw an extra card each turn. We have Shock, which is either early removal for creatures, it's a way to control the board, additional reach and burn, or deals in with planeswalkers. We have Spectral Sailor. Spectral Sailor is played in a lot of like blue-based aggro decks or like tempo decks. It'll draw some cards, you can play it at instant speed. So hold up one of these, drop this down. Uh, Fairy Vandal is another new flash threat. So Fairy Vandal, whenever we draw our second card each turn, you get to put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. So it's a 1-2 flyer that scales late game. And in the shell that we're building, um, we're in, like enticed to draw a lot of cards. So opt basically reads, scry one, draw a card, put a 1-1 one -one counter on this target creature. Uh, so it grows pretty big. A uh, card I'm interested in seeing uh, how good it is is Improbable Alliance. So whenever you draw the second card each turn, you create a 1-1 one -one blue fairy creature token with flying. And it's got uh, a mana sink if you flood out to... Uh, basically faithless loot, draw a card, and discard a card. Uh, just uh, some more catch-all removal. Uh, Scorching the Dragonfire in the main board over Lava Coil because it hits both creatures and planeswalkers. Uh, dealing with a resolved planeswalker is something we want to be able to do. Uh, it also has the exile condition with uh, black having a lot of reanimation spells can be relevant, uh, similar to uh, Lava Coil, which we have in the sideboard. So this is the main card I wanted to build around, Iron Craig Pyromancer. So it is a electrostatic field on steroids. It's a three mana 04. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, uh, it deals three damage to any target. So draw an extra card, lightning bolt. Again, with the example with opt, uh, you get to draw a card with opt and lightning bolt all for one mana. So we're playing a full four of, that's the only other rare in the deck outside of the steam vents and temple of epiphanies. Uh, so we're playing four of those and then I'm playing uh, two Sahilis. We're playing a lot of uh, non-creature spells. Uh, we might Sahili. We got to try out. Actually, I thought we were playing a higher density, but Sahili might just be better served as more scorching dragon fires and another chemist's insight. But we'll play some games to see. Uh, so this is on the fence with this one. Uh, four winged words. We got a lot of early flyers, uh, so this can be a cheap draw spell engine. Uh, two chemist's insight. It's effectively two spells because we get the jumpstart ability. Uh, and it's a good way to recoup some of the early plays that we have. And then three Crackling Drakes. So unlike a traditional Drake stack where you're trying to get like a 15-4 Drake, uh, this is more just a value card. Uh, crackling Drake does draw a card when it enters the battlefield, which triggers the second card each turn. So this could either deal three damage, create a token, put counters on it. So kind of all in that sense there. 
Um, the sideboard wise, or land base wise, we're not playing any of the castles, obviously, because they're rare lands. Um, I'd probably play a couple, probably two of each of the blue and the red ones if you have them. And then sideboard wise, as I've mentioned with all these decks, sideboards are currently based on going in blind, cards that I feel would be useful. Uh, they'll likely change as we play more games. But uh, on the streamer event, we're seeing a lot of green-based decks, so Aether Gust is a good card for tempo. Um, you're usually just trying to tempo with this deck. You're not going to overpower them. You're going to either make a lot of tokens or do incidental burn damage. Uh, Fry is for like Teferi's, for Narset. Um, if there is ever a deck that gets impacted by Narset, it's this deck. Uh, so this is definitely something you want to keep Narset off the battlefield. Lava Coil versus Creature decks negates first like control decks and flame sweep first go wide decks um, all our creatures are flyers or have more toughness um, so flame sweep doesn't impact us that much so that's pretty much the deck uh, let me know what you think if i missed any other considerations if you're looking for a couple other like non-budget options to add in here brazen borrower would be good um, i like the royal scions as a loot effect that always triggers could also give your drakes like t trample stuff like that um, might be a shell for phoenix as well playing some numbers but we're not a dedicated phoenix deck in the sense that we're binning stuff we're usually trying to get out a couple early threats and then just tempo the opponent out but yeah as always let me know what you think if there's any decks you want to see on thursday that i haven't featured yet uh, on the deck tech series i can try to get those going and i'm hoping my voice and my flu passes before then um, even this video at like five minutes and my voice already feels like sandpaper. So thanks for watching and have a great one as always.